Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jaffe Johnson. I welcome to Blockchain for All. Um, I want to believe everybody enjoyed the weekend and the two days break we have gone on the show. Uh, we are here to continue with the wonderful series on how blockchain has impacted or is impacting the life of everyone. And for those people that have been joining us from the beginning of 2023 Blockchain for All series, I believe you must have learned a lot from our speakers. And it's really a promising one because we have seen a lot of testimony, a lot of people confirming that, yes, a lot of what the speakers have said has been impactful. Um, some people have been using it, and we have been seeing a lot of people actually pushing um, the videos. We really appreciate for everyone sharing the video with our community. We appreciate we have been getting a lot of views. It shows that our community is working, and, and people are really down to learn from our speakers. So thank you very much for everyone that has taken time to join us since the beginning of this program for 2023 edition. Uh, I want to appreciate our speakers that have taken our time to ensure that they have been on time to um, dish out a lot from their knowledge bank. Uh, we as a community, uh, um, Nigeria and Africa as a whole, don't take this for granted. Thank you very much. We know how busy they could be but um, they have taken time because they understand the value of education. So thank you very much to our speakers, uh, to our sponsors, um, Heaven Academy, Bikonta, uh, and Benny Agro want to appreciate you for headlining the sponsorship for this year, uh, Blockchain for All um, Education Series. Thank you very much for all you have done. Without you, we would have been here. And to all our fans, to all our viewers, thank you once more for sharing the video. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking your questions. And thank you for always being there for us for the past three years. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you and welcome once more. So today we are going to be talking on a wonderful topic and by a wonderful speaker. Uh, he's not just a speaker, he's a mentor, he's a coach. He's someone that has helped a lot of Nigerians in understanding how blockchain works, understanding how tokenization works. Uh, he's working with a lot of companies and majorly he's one of the uh, front runners of a very wonderful blockchain that is any blockchain is currently in Dubai and they have been looking at how to tokenize a lot of assets. Um, he has helped under, help youths and Nigerians understand how tokenization works. He has helped Nigerians and youth, a lot of thousands of youth understand how the blockchain works. He was here with us last year to talk about um, how the NFTs, how uh, Metaverse work, how um, crypto entirely works and the blockchain. And a lot of speakers uh, were really happy watching what he was doing. A lot of our viewers were so happy to see what he was doing. And we're so glad to have him here again with us. Um, he's a crypto, he's a blockchain analyst. Um, he's a mentor, he's a coach, he's a financial educator. Uh, but one of why I look at him as um, a blockchain evangelist. <laughs> I just look at his blockchain evangelist because I've seen him going uh, uh, travel around the world to see how blockchain works and trying to see how he brings that back to Nigeria and to teach people again. So today I will be welcoming Mr. Ituan Idioko. Uh, I hope I pronounced that well. Uh, he'll be coming on to talk on a wonderful topic and to come up to see, you see him. I know a lot of us will remember him. So welcome, sir. Welcome for joining uh, us in Blockchain for All 2023 once more. I'm happy to see you. Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, I think many more thanks to the Conta, uh, Blockchain for All and the Airborne Academy. Uh, thank I think you. you guys are giving people the opportunity to learn about the block blockchain. Um, so uh, basically, my name is Itwen. Um, I've been a professional in the maritime industry and the uh, I've had an avid investment uh, interest in terms of emerging technologies. That was since 98, and I came across the blockchain in 2014. So let's say I had quite some experience. So I'm here to talk about the NFT and the metaverse. And I'll try to do my best to make it simple and uncomplicated for those who are venturing into this space for the first time. So thanks uh, for the opportunity once more. So thank you very much, um, Sir Itwen. Um, I, I'm very happy because most times you come, you are always a smiling person. I always like your smile. Um, <laughs> behind the smile, I know there are a lot of knowledge and money in, in it. So um, last year you were here. I, I could remember 
um, a lot of information you shared last year about uh, blockchain speed. I I remember a lot of questions people came up with. Um, to ask. In fact, we're going to even finish the session because of time. And uh, I remember how you said, okay, you won't even talk about metaverse. And over the period of one year, I've been following your journey to see how you have been able to even connect with companies around meta. So I, I saw it as the best topic to give you because you have been in the space um, oh. since last year to this year. So I've been following up from um, how you have been following EGF, how you have been following any projects, a lot of uh, projects that I've been seeing you pushing. In fact, one of them that you even came, I think, toward or something in the whole of Nigeria or Africa or the entire project itself. So, so it was interesting because I was following every speaker based on what he was able to teach us to be able to have a track record to know that, okay, this year, this is the best fit for the speaker. And I can't, I can't really give anybody this topic because I have seen the process. I have seen you travel around. So you are the best fit for us. And I'm very sure a lot of our viewers will get value from today. Okay, so uh, today you will go deeply into your topic. Um, how to do the future of NFTs, understanding how the impact life, a lot of projects are coming out there. Um, how do we even make use of it? It's more like uh, we don't know if the vibe is already going off for metaverse or NFT or where are we actually going into. So, before we go deep into the topic, I just want to give us a good understanding of the blockchain, like we usually start to show that we'll have a good um, basis for our viewers. Um, what is the blockchain from your own perspective and how do you see it impacting life? Okay, so uh, before we talk about the blockchain, we'll start from um, the very basis um, foundation, uh, which was the internet. So um, internet uh, web 1.0 um, was like the internet of information uh, 30 years ago, if you can remember about that. So a lot of people were interested in encyclopedia email so it's more or less like a read-only uh, situation. So after some time, right, years had passed, um, people got to express themselves better. Uh, so you had uh, Web 2.0, which was like social media. Um, people could connect, people could reach out to loved ones who could show their profiles, a lot of things. Facebook, Google, Twitter came in, and um, that was that current phase of the evolution of the internet. Uh, currently, the, the internet is evolving now into what we call Web 3.0. So it is more or less uh, an era of decentralization and uh, more or less the internet of value. So um, anybody that has been um, quite inept enough to understand what is happening, you would have heard about buzzwords like blockchain, crypto, NFT, and metaverse. So uh, not to confuse uh, people, uh, blockchain is basically just a structure in which... Uh, um, records are stored, digital records, better than the way we've been storing those records in earlier times. So um, it's just a database, a public database um, that is structured in what we call peer-to-peer -peer connection. So it's like a digital ledger. Uh, the advantages of the, the ledger is that uh, there's a digital signature, there's um, authentication of tra transaction, and it is safe, right, generally. So you can imagine your um, Google spreadsheet. Let me come down. Google spreadsheet shared among numerous computers in the world. So uh, the records are seen, right? Everybody can see the record, but nobody can uh, can corrupt it. So that was the initial idea. Started sometime by Bitcoin, and so various layer one blockchain started then uh, evolving and then uh, solving problems, real time problems for for people. So. You had the Bitcoin uh, as a layer one starting, you now had Ethereum coming. And so you have other layer one blockchains like um, Ethereum, um, um, Binance, you have Solana, Aeron, currently changed to Multiverse X, uh, Tron, Polkadot, Avalanche, and then a recent one, um, Zenic. So um, it's just a transaction enabler. It has um, features that make most businesses right now change the way they do things because it saves them cost, eliminates the middlemen, provide security and anonymity for them and a lot more um, advantages. So that is basically just uh, the blockchain. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much for that uh, wonderful explanation on what the blockchain is and uh, you'll be able to make it very simple. Like simple makes it better. Like understanding that this is a, a, a platform that allows us to do secure applications, um, do transactions with ease, 
and also help to connect different things that we have thought maybe was beyond connections. And that's really wonderful. And looking at how smart um, the blockchain has provided um, developers to be able to do smart applications, and it's wonderful. So um, it's a good one to understand that, yes, we have a technology like that, and we have been seeing different use cases. So we want to believe um, the metaverse, the NFTs are part of the use case or that are being, being built using uh, the blockchain. So, um, so what is um, the metaverse and the NFTs as definitions from you? Okay, so I'll start with NFT. Let me try to make it easy. So NFT is basically non-fungible token. Uh, with that, I don't think I've made it any clearer for those who are not aware. So non-fungible means that it is unique. It cannot be uh, replaced. So um, if you want to uh, put that in context with fungible. So fungible is like physical money and maybe your physical notes. If you give it to somebody, it can be exchanged from one to another. But uh, NFTs are non-fungible. They are, they are special. They are unique. And they carry some signatures that show the authenticity of that. So um, the basis for which an NFT will run will definitely be on a blockchain. So again, the simple properties of the blockchain, a distributed ledger that records a transaction. So each NFT that you know is actually unique from the other NFT. And because of its uniqueness, it holds a value that is set by the market. And you can see demand and supply. And just the same way you have a physical asset like land, um, gold, you also have NFTs that represent three one assets, okay, like artwork. And so um, one of such is uh, a tokenization, which is currently uh, the rave going in. So um, the NFT gives people an opportunity where real life assets can be digitally um, owned by various people around the world. So you can see a lot of NF NFTs uh, currently coming in. The, you can see ads, videos, collectibles, music, even land. It's currently um, available right now if you want to check it online. So um, one of the most famous uh, NFTs sold was the, uh, the owner of uh, Twitter, Jack Dorsey. Uh, I think he sold his, his, his first tweet okay, uh, for over 2.9 million. So the fact that somebody is able to buy that means that for as long as it is possible, that information regarding his first tweet is owned by somebody and that can be verified right now on the blockchain. So I think that is just a um, little bit about uh, the simple understanding about the NFTs, okay? So uh, there are various applications, like I said. So you have art, uh, which of course is the most uh, uh, visible of such uh, um, application of the NFTs, okay? Uh, you have fashion. And there are people that look into uh, benefit from supply chains uh, in terms of world of fashion. You have license and certification. Mm -hmm. Um, people that benefit from um, like students who want to have their certificates done digitally and it needs to be confirmation by maybe employers. You have sports. Um, sports currently is a, is, a, is a rave right now. Okay. Uh, you also have gaming, which will take us a little bit into the metaverse where um, people right now can own characters and build characters that create a certain value within the game space. Uh, but last but not the least is investments and collateral. So that NFT that you hold can uh, be used as uh, collateral in decentralized uh, finance. So the applications that let you borrow money and um, by uh, setting your NFT as a collateral and then use it to do whatever it is you want to do. Uh, thank you. All right, so thank you very much for that. I think I'll be able to pick a lot of this case from apps, fashion, license, certification, gaming, investment, and collateral. So the NFT use cases can be so much. It's almost um, connecting with everything we are doing from our day-to-day -day life because um, these are the same things that we do every day that is just the normal way, but this is giving us a way to be able to take them to the blockchain, them to the blockchain and even make uh, more and recurring profit from them. So thank you very much for that um, good explanation. So um, the, the question in the topic is what uh, what is the future? Because um, yes, they are here. We, a lot of people made money from NFTs last year, uh, made money, lost money. Some people purchased monkeys, uh, pictures of monkeys, they lost money. Uh, so many NFTs were being sold. As funny as 
some people purchase rabbits, a picture of, in fact, some people purchase blank picture. So what is the future? Because um, yes, the wave can come, but is there even a future? And if there is, what is the future? And how do you see it coming into play? So let's start hitting the topic to understand what is coming and how we can prepare. All right, so um, so let's let's try to imagine a virtual world where uh, billions of people live, work, they shop, they learn and they interact with each other, all from the comfort of their couches in the physical world. So in this world, uh, the computer screens we use today connect to like a World Wide Web, right, and become a portal for like a 3D virtual realm. Of course, that is um, happening. So just like real life, but the only difference is that it is bigger and better. So you have digital copy of yourselves, um, which we call avatars, that can move freely uh, from one experience to the other, taking your identity and even sometimes your money with you. What I've just explained to you right now is called the metaverse. And despite the hype and everything is still in its development phases. So you can see that it is not even existing in the way it's supposed to exist. So. Uh, uh, what, why is the metaverse very important? If you remember in um, sometime in 2021, uh, October, um, Facebook rebranded its uh, corporate identity to Meta and announced plans to invest roughly about uh, $10 billion into that concept. And this drove the tech industry uh, uh, crazy because other giants like Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, Nvidia, Qualcomm started investing uh, their dollars, uh, their money into this concept. And so studies show that um, because of this influx of uh, research and development, that the metaverse economy could reach over $5 trillion by 2030. So the question you're going to ask yourself, what is the metaverse and why is it going to make this kind of rave? So like we said, the metaverse is uh, um, simply just like uh, a virtual environment, right? Uh, digitally done with an ecosystem that provides uh, real-time collaboration with software and blockchain-based uh, finance tools. So you have two ways the blockchain, uh, the metaverse can be uh, assessed, two technologies that are currently existing. Uh, so the first one is uh, virtual reality, uh, which is like a stimulated 3D environment that enables people to interact with a virtual surrounding in a way that it kind of approximately gives you the reality as if it is you're utilizing your senses. And so this approximation uh, is now uh, what we call the VR uh, headset that takes over your field of vision. So you have uh, haptics, you have hand glue, vest, and even some body tracking suits that give you a more lifelike interaction with the virtual environment. And the other aspect of the technology uh, that you can assess the metaverse is augmented um, reality. So uh, this is a lot less than the virtual reality. It just gives a digital overlay on the top of the real world. So you are looking at it like through a lens, okay? So um, you have Google glasses, you have heads up display. Uh, so whether it is VR or AR, the experiences gives you a different uh, feel from the physical environment and so you have uh, some um you have some um experiences some metaverse experiences currently uh, happening right now you have gaming platforms like uh, the central land minecraft that you can access through your browser right but it gives you that feel of, uh, of what the environment a different environment for from there so basically uh, uh, the metaverse is consists of um let me just say about four contents, right? So you have experience. Um, so experience has to deal with the content, the application, and the kind of world people want to interact with. You also have um, platforms. So there are platforms that give people access to content applications. And you have infrastructure and hardware. So you have an operating system, whether it is Apple or Android, and then you now have enablers. So you have tools and applications that manage it. So this... So this is basically what the metaverse is all about. So the question here is NFTs and how do these NFTs fit into this metaverse? So um, remember my explanation is that uh, NFT plays a big role in terms of ownership because it's an asset, it's decentralized, it's on the blockchain. So you can have yours, 
and I can have mine. That is the essence of this uh, decentralization. So, because it is a secure digital asset based on a particular blockchain, right? Uh, the NFT can represent, can give the owner, okay, a kind of like a digital deed or proof of ownership that can be bought or sold in the metaverse, okay? So um, if you have an asset and you're in the metaverse and you have developed that asset in whatever uh, in ways that that asset could have been developed, then somebody who has an interest in that asset can purchase it off you in the metaverse. So um, we've had... Um, there are companies that have taken this beyond uh, the initial stage of, of, of investment. So you have uh, companies like Nike. Um, mm. Nike acquired one, um, it's called RTFKT. It required a startup that builds what we call digital, digital sneakers, right? Sneakers that they wear, and artifacts using NFTs and blockchain uh, technology. So on the meta metaverse, if you are operating on the metaverse, you can buy these sneakers and it makes you look fashionable. It makes you look uh, uh, cool. Of course, people can, based on your profile, people can uh, can like you, right? And so uh, we don't have, only have Nike, we have Roblox. We, there are some companies that have decided to take a look at how people dress, take a look at, uh, at the real life and imitate the same thing into the digital world where somebody's looks, somebody's appeal can create a, a certain level of uh, augmented reality with whatever that game situation, that metaverse situation is, right? So, uh, like we said, there are cases for the NFTs. The NFTs can work in the metaverse. The metaverse is yet to be developed. It's a technology that is just currently exploding. But statistics, again, show that this technology is definitely going to be worth more trillions in as the years coming. So, People are looking for an opportunity to, to participate in this. So that is where NFTs meet the metaverse. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much for, for that wonderful use case scenario and also how the NFTs um, can benefit um, everyone. And thank you for also, um, I think you have even started jumping into the questions that have to do with the metaverse because a lot of confusion will come in there. It's NFT, the same thing as metaverse. But you have, uh, you have been able to explain to us that um, the metaverse will be the environment where some of these NFTs will be used. So you can have your pictures um, in the gallery room in the metaverse. You can have um, your code. You can have your avatars. You can have different items which serve as NFTs on the metaverse, which is the environment. So thank you very much for that one. So we have been seeing a lot of companies moving into it. And yes, it has, I think me as a person, uh, one of the things that made me started taking on the issue of VR and um, the Meta was very serious was when uh, Facebook did their rebrand to Meta and seeing the amount of money, in fact, he was pushing into uh, Meta as a whole was, he was losing money, but he was so calm. That's to tell you that these are people that understand what's happening or what's going to happen in the next future. So I had to take that as a personal um, challenge to myself. That, okay, this guy is going to look at that. what is the minimum uh, viable product that can build out of um, the meta world. And I was looking at how to get VRs and see how to give people experience. So yes, we have been seeing Microsoft going in, we have been seeing Google going in, uh, Facebook is already trying to find a way to <laughs> monopolize the entire market by creating their Oculus and like diving, diving so deep into it. Uh, so what do you think or how do you see Nigerian businesses and startups? Because we are more of um, a set of people that always wait until the products have been produced, then we just consume. But how do you see Nigerian businesses um, tapping into these uh, metaverse uh, NFTs um, to make even their businesses more global and even more acceptable? Okay, so um, uh, one of such uh, uh, vehicle that can easily, right, be uh, it can be incorporated into our system in Nigeria in this case is the um, is tokenization. So uh, basically, tokenization is uh, the just digital conversion of assets, asset real life assets, into the blockchain, and then um, the, uh, decentralizing the ownership of that asset. So remember, those tokens that we come out from those assets from the uh, tokenization are a kind of NFTs. The only difference is that they are backed up by real world assets. So. Uh, depending on the startups that are taking a look into the metaverse who want to play in the metaverse, depending on the kind of appeal 
or depending on the type of uh, um, content they can give to people, right? It could be, like we said, it could be fashion, it could be art, right? Uh, it could be, we, we can look at our uh, uh, galleries, our museum, somebody can put his painting in there and of course people can go in, pay for the painting, people can even own those paintings digitally, okay? So tokenization also gives people that access where several people can own it, they own an asset, right? Because the tokens are fractionalized. So each fraction is representing a partial value of the full asset. So people going into that museum to see those paintings can pay a certain amount of fee in the museum and that fee is spread out to people that own that asset. So um, whether it is sports, uh, in fact, if we move it, we can even look at uh, the, Niger the Nigerian movie industry because tokenization is happening right now in the movie industry. Nollywood can get into that market uh, 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 big Brother, um, Nigeria, Africa, however it is, can get into that market. There's a lot of opportunity. But whether they want to venture into uh, NF, uh, the metaverse right now, of course, uh, we usually take a step back when this is uh, when this technology is new, and then when we fully understand it, that is when we get to play. But there's that opportunity right now, and we can take advantage of that market, especially Africa. So what the, what the blockchain has done is put everybody on the same level. All right, uh, technology has put everybody on the same level. Go out there, get your content. See how you can develop your content, and there's a world out there waiting to uh, um, get involved in your ideas. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. And I think you have just said it all. We just have to find a way to take advantage of how to create our content. That means whatever product you are producing, you can find a way to recognize it and also sell it on the metaverse when we fully come into that but at least for now a lot of people can skip take advantage i've been seeing um some real estate companies doing some of this uh, concept uh they were able to take the video of all their real estate uh model is in the 3d and deploy it on vr headsets and so when they come to clients uh, they don't even need to take you to the physical side all you need to do is wear the vr headset and you be able to go around the entire um, real estate and see how this now so i'm seeing a lot of use cases where um, companies are beginning to experiment with um, even fashion designers now. You don't even need to go to the store. You can just wear the headset and you can go and see different type of shoes. You can even pick up a shoe, um, turn it around, see different um, details on the shoe. So I feel um, it's very important, just as you have said, uh, we should not just be um, people that just uh, consume products, but let's see how can indigenous businesses um, adopt this. So you, it can be as simple as getting someone to take um, a whole video of your entire store, different product details, and see how to deploy it on a VR headset, and take it out to your customers. So you can even um, have your marketing team go to different uh, people's house, have them experience that. In fact, somebody said, uh, like, the future of shopping is going to be from how do you give experience of your product? Because when people have yes. a better experience of how your product, because it's perception, it's all about perception. That's why someone can just go and see a very good picture of a particular product and he decides to order it. And even though he's been sent rubbish, but he's happy because he feels he saw something that had the best quality. So how do we uh, move this experience to people at the comfort of their home? People don't want to go out. People are becoming so lazy. So business need to understand that Definitely. we can use uh, the blockchain and the metaverse to actually bring this experience down to their home. So thank you very much for, for explaining that. Um, a lot of questions are coming from the WhatsApp group. Please, if you are watching live, um, just comment on the uh, on the comment section there. We'll be able to see it. Okay, um, you don't need to send me um, your questions on WhatsApp or on the group. Um, kindly ensure that you write your questions on the comment section. If you are watching from any of the social media, from LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, don't worry. As long as there's a comment section there, just ask your question and we'll be able to ask. For people asking from our own group, uh, I'll just take some of them, but please go and write your questions on the comment section so that other people will also see how it's been done. So some of the questions we are getting here is, uh, so I'm interested, uh, it's interesting to know that you are from, you're a professional from the marine sector. I think you said that in your introduction, yes. Uh, so it's even, surprising to see someone from your industry linking up with blockchain. So how do you think it's even going to affect um, you as a person and the marine industry? So I think someone is pulling blockchain and everything to marine sector now. So maybe you'll be able to give us answers on that side. 
All right. So um, again, uh, blockchain is all about decentralization. Um, just like the internet, uh, when the internet came, a lot of people that didn't really understand much about the internet. And we were told that all the businesses will go online. Uh, there are some people that would have, uh, you would have fought with some people definitely. But right now, all the businesses are online. So what will happen in real life terms? Um, industries are taking advantage of the fact that the blockchain el eliminates middlemen. Information on the blockchain is secure. Um, um, it's anonymous, it's, it's a distributed ledger. So businesses would definitely decide to move in. So if you're not aware, the logistics industry has been affected. Uh, the medical industry has been affected. Governments are using blockchain to solve uh, their day-to-day -day problems. Um, we have even the oil and gas. There is a blockchain application even in the oil and gas. And then, of course, finance, which is what affects each and every one of us. So the marine industry, if you're asking me in my own opinion, is definitely going to come into the blockchain. So whether it is ownership of assets, uh, uh, setting up of projects, new projects, um, renewable energy coming in, uh, the marine environment will play a role in that. Of course, like we said, data. Uh, we deal a lot with data in the maritime industry. And so those data, as long as it is on the blockchain, cannot be corrupted. Anybody can have access to that data and they can use it for uh, to improve their services. So it's definitely going to come into the marine environment. We'll just look, just to ensure that you, are, you, you keep your eyes open if there are opportunities, because of course the technology is disruptive. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for that answer, sir. Um, another question is coming is, uh, recently we are seeing the government trying to give a go on the regulations of uh, blockchain, or, but they are not doing it in a straight way for us to understand. Um, I could remember, I think this is someone that, was, I that watched your video, that you were, you were saying we have to just take on um, some of these challenges, try to see how we can provide solutions from your discussions last year. With the way the government is going to know, how do you think um, it's going to affect the entire um, NFT or crypto market? How, what is your prediction um, about the entire policy? So I think it has to do with the policy we have been hearing some news from government. They don't just want to say it in a layman term. You know, Nigerians with English, we can write big, big English on paper. So people don't understand, are they saying we can go ahead or are they still dragging their feet? Or are they saying it for their own benefit, which we don't understand? But what is your view around the entire decision making by the government? Okay, as long as you have a sovereignty um, and there is an activity within that sovereignty, uh, the government must look for a way to participate in it. Uh, whether they understand or they do not understand, it's a different ball game. So if it's something they don't understand, uh, they will try to put a clamp on it till they understand. If it's something that they understand, then they try to see how they can key in, right? So blockchain technology is disruptive. It has come to solve some problems that government could not solve. So um, some of the wise or smart governments early decided to, well, it is an innovative technology. So instead of them to stifle it, let them embrace it. Um, one of such governments is the UAE government that designed a law that supports crypto technologies, blockchain innovation, right? So those are smart countries that think ahead in order to do what, uh, uh, develop themselves. Of course, they have a vision, the UAE government. There are some governments that have not really understood this process, so they stifle it, right? Uh, but again, the thing is that no matter how much you hold, um, no matter you can't, you can't, uh, you can't uh, stifle something that is changing, that is creating constant waves. Once the masses get to know about it, they will find one way or the other to get that done. We have, uh, yes, blockchain regulations. Uh, Europe is struggling with them. You have America struggling. You have China uh, having a strict uh, um, policy on blockchain, um, being, uh, being more or less centralized, not decentralized in the way it was. its philosophy uh, came into being. So uh, where does the Nigerian government stand? Uh, some time ago, we heard where there was a ban in terms of cryptocurrency and all that. Of course, cryptocurrency, you can't ban it. But when you know that you are missing a lot because the blockchain mm. is giving an alternative to solutions that you are providing, then you want to find a way to key because you can, in one, some way, decide to engage in like a taxation, right? You can tax, because once you start to tax, you start to get involved in what people are doing. So if you don't, if you hold on to, if you hold on to stifle, you lose 
innovation, you lose an opportunity for you to participate in that. So governments around the world are waking up, right? And there are several factors, the war um, going on in Russia, the, the collapse of banks in, in US. Uh, there are a lot of uh, factors, there are a lot of activities going around the world where people are beginning to see the importance of decentralization of uh, opportunities wherever it is they are. Uh, the Nigerian government has taken some steps. There are some news uh, that we've gotten to here. Um, we talk about um, the carbonization of the atmosphere. We've talked about the central digital currency and central bank getting involved in that. So slowly, we are, we are having the government relax its grip on uh, innovation, right, with technology. Um, whether the new administration will come in and bolster that, well, we do not know. But the thing is that the new administration that will come in, that will be sworn in in May 29, can no longer ignore that technology. So the best way they can do is what? Find a way in order to merge this technology with their own existing systems in order for them to participate. Or uh, they, they tend to get lost in get lost in what's happening in the world. But believe you me, the blockchain, as like I said earlier, has leveled all opportunities for countries. So this is where Africa can become rich better than its contemporaries, right? So it's a new technology has come out. It has given everybody an equal playing field. Those countries that know, or those sovereignties that know what it is they want have decided to tackle it head headlong. And then, of course, it will become better, right? So mm -hmm. uh, let's hope that uh, the government can uh, take advantage of that and help our startups anyway uh, and build up their products. Exactly. So thank you very much uh, for that wonderful answer to this question. Um, so another question again, uh, I think this is from the academy itself. Um, every speaker that has come here has explained, for people that talked about trading, um, they give us concept of how to trade strategies in trading, some came about investing, uh, what I think to look out for in investing, some that has to do with uh, jobs. People that talked about how to get jobs, what I think to look out for. And today I'm talking about uh, NFT and metaverse. So, um, yes, a lot of people have purchased uh, pictures of monkeys that are worth nothing now. Some purchased pictures of stones or rocks and it's nothing now. So what are your advice on what to look out for before you invest in any NFT project? Or possibly we are going to begin to see some different type of VR, some different type of metaverse, uh, metaverse ecosystem. What are your advice and what are the things we should look out for before we invest? So that we will not go and put our money again and uh, we we'll be the same cycle of losing money. All right. So um, with, uh, with the introduction of a new technology comes risk, right? Uh, people who don't get to do their due diligence uh, get in there and they get uh, wrecked, right? So you have a lot of scams in the NFT, uh, NFT space, right? So uh, since it's relatively new and it's a little bit unregulated, there's the potential for criminals to exploit uh, loopholes and carry out scams. So uh, we have Ponzi and a lot of art scams. So if you are not facing, if you have not been affected by impersonation, you would have been affected by a rock pool or a pump and dump scheme or mm. phishing, uh, phishing scam, right? Uh, or customer support, somebody coming to meet you somewhere on either WhatsApp or Telegram asking you, do you have a problem with your digital wallet? Can I help you? Or people bidding for a, a, an NFT that doesn't, uh, and then it's a wrong set of uh, uh, bidders, uh, counterfeit NFTs, uh, people who can plagiarize a work and then put it on the marketplace for unsuspecting buyers, uh, give away NFT giveaways or airdrop scams, and then investor scams. So, these are all the things you face when you come into the NFT space. So what are the ways to avoid this if you've actually fallen for this? Uh, the first thing I will tell you or advise you is that please do your research diligently, right? Uh, I'll check, usually check the details of transactions that you are agreeing to, okay? If the marketplace is not reputable or well-known, then you know that that is a red flag, okay? So you look at the reviews, Take a look at the uh, creator's level of engagement. Uh, the blockchain is open, so you can see an information from the beginning of from the from it when it was originated to the point in time you are doing your research. So that can give you an idea of whether this is uh, um, legal or genuine, right? So again, do not open files from people you do not know. So 
Um, you have um, hackers that have created viruses that target some certain crypto uh, wallets. So you click on a link and it tells you to go to your wallet somewhere and then you put in your passphrases and then they get to hack your wallet. Uh, be careful about giveaways, especially free drops that can carry security risk. And be careful, ensure that you are, if you are involved in a project, the project is legal. Then one important thing is that we're in a digital economy right now. So everything you're going to do in the next few years will be in your phone. Your bank will be in your phone. All your assets will be in your phone. So please never give out your private key or your seed phrase to anyone. Never do that, right? Anybody coming to ask for, uh, want to advise you or solicit your assistance or help you solve a technical problem, once it gets to your seed phrase, please do not give this out. If possible, um, use a two-factor authentication if you have uh, a wallet that encourages that. Um, of course, deal with official sites. That is a very, very important thing. So always go to the verified site. Avoid using any link that takes you that makes you jump around uh, the internet, right? So resist that lure to um, try to get bargains. So double check the NFT price is a very, very important thing. Uh, also use wallets that are, use burner wallets. It's easy right now to create a lot of wallets on different applications. So if there's a wallet you want to have a transaction, you want to do a transaction on, you can send it, send money from your main crypto wallet to that Bonner wallet and so that Bonner wallet just carries a small amount of money so that in case you are sending it out and somebody hacks it, it don't, they don't get to your main wallet. Now, another important feature that has happened, uh, that's come up currently right now is uh, the blue tick mark, like verification mark. So yeah. if you are going to purchase any NFT and you're going to a marketplace, ensure that the verification mark is there, especially in trusted sites. They will not, um, they will not put up uh, NFTs from uh, uh, false or, or, or scam uh, sites. So ensure that you have that blue tick mark there. And I think if you have one of one of few of these uh, uh, safety measures in place, then you will not, of course, you will not uh, uh, get yourself involved in um, either buying the wrong NFT, right? And last but not the least, always get an NFT that is backed by a real life uh, reward asset. Uh, there is an op- there's always an opportunity there for residual income. Thanks, Jeff. Wow. So thank you very much. I've been trying to take all the notes and you have said a lot. I think it's not just you. You have said a lot. And it affects the nature of how Nigeria is seen. Uh, more especially, I think we have to be very careful when we have to do a free air job. We, there is a lot of people that want to just go for a wolf, a wolf, a wolf. And the little 100 or $200 you have at the end of the day, you lose it all. So we have to be careful for with the entire um, airdrop. Scammers are using the laws now. And as you have said, clicking of links, uh, people need to really be aware of that. You need to check the links you are clicking on. You need to check the price and you need to understand um, access. There are so many people, in fact, recently I've been facing a lot of um, questions uh, that somebody accessed my wallet, this and that. You give somebody a phone, you say, yeah, that wow. gave my friend, he was able to check, blah, blah, blah. Okay, when I was opening the account, someone helped me to open the account. Uh, he also have the seed phrase. So all those um, challenges are there. And the surprising thing, sir, is we're not even, these are not people that started cryptocurrency recently. Some of them have been in the space for four years. So you'll be hearing this kind of thing and you'll be like wondering, like, how? This is not something I'm supposed to share. And you'll be thinking, okay, I'm thinking is this person, maybe somebody in the community. No, this person, I gave the seed phrase. And the seed phrase, I'm very sure you will not steal my money. But the issue is that somebody can also take his phone because your friend also have his own friends. So I think those are the things that we need to be very careful of. And thank you for bringing it to our notice. So these are very important um, security measures and what to check out for to before we purchase NFT. So ho- hopefully we are going to see a lot of NFTs that are going to do better. Um, I don't know, sir. Is there a possibility that some of the NFT we purchase and their price have dropped drastically. Is there any possibility that we are possibly going to go back to all-time high again? Uh, of course, yes. Um, that is, of course, if you, pro- if you uh, purchase um, NFT that is backed by reward assets that has a potential value. So, um, of course, the uh, the market is down. So, a lot of things will be down, right? But And uh, uh, creating solutions for people. 
right? So as long as you have that asset as an NFT, then you are safe okay, to, to definitely withstand the, um, the beer market. But if you don't have any NFT that is either generating income for you or is backed by a real uh, life asset, then of course you are just getting it. And some of the NFTs you've seen, um, no, no offense to any of the projects, monkeys, bears, uh, uh, um, drawings, or all those kind of things. It's just based on hype and emotion. People want to have something because they feel that this thing has a value, right? So again, uh, NFTs must be very, very unique. They, are, they should be one of, one of a kind. Of course, it's application in the real life environment that I, I cannot overemphasize on that. So once you have this, if you have a good asset, Real, real world, backed by real world assets, right? And it is a, it, it's a project that is building. It will definitely withstand the um, the the bear market. And if you can get them now, if they are currently at a, a rock bottom prices, please do, because when the market bounces back, you are definitely going to get a, a, a multiple folds of your return on investment. Wow. So thank you very much uh, for that. So, so I think. Uh, what we need to check out for is some of the NFTs we are holding, if they are even worth holding, and um, if they are being backed by real time or real life projects, then it's even good for us to accumulate more. A lot of the whole points also in cryptocurrency are, uh, some of them are low, even though we are still getting some information that there might be another crash or what have you. But I feel the entire thing is if we are able to do our research proper, we'll be able to know uh, assets that are going to stand the test of time and we can take advantage of them now. When people are scared, I think that's when wealth can be generated. So we need to understand when to invest and where to invest. So uh, thank you very much for that wonderful one. A lot of people have been joining now. Um, I know there are late comments, but please, I know you must have followed probably our speaker since last year. Uh, we're talking about NFT and the metaverse. Uh, we're in the question and answer section now. For people asking questions on the WhatsApp group, I will not take questions from the WhatsApp group again. Um, please, if you want to ask your question, ask the question on the live comment uh, session there so that we'll be able to see it together with the um, guest speaker today. Um, if you are also watching, kindly share with your friends. Uh, we, are, we are just giving this opportunity because the guest speaker is live now. Um, if you ask your question when he's not live, then it might be another time when we we'll invite him to answer your questions. But this is the opportunity you have. We have another 15 minutes for um live question and answers what we'll be taking now is questions from the academy um any questions that is not on the live session we will not be taking those questions so kindly ask your questions on the live session so thank you very much uh for everyone viewing um this live event now it's uh, um one of the things we're looking at in the academy is uh we're trying to see how to educate people about um nfts about um, metaverse you can give your shout out please again to mr etuan we are going to display for him live to see do your shout out and it's going to pop out live for mr etn to see so um the academic question will be coming in while we wait for the viewers questions to come uh, we are also looking at how do we educate we're looking at how um how to penetrate the entire education system that has to do with um training youth letting them understand um how the metaverse work and how the energy that we use um, so maybe from your own advice, what are the methods you feel it can help the academy reach out to more youth and see how we can even inspire more youth into the entire ecosystem? Oh, okay. So um, of course I've been uh, following uh, the academy for quite some time. Uh, you guys are doing quite great um, in terms of exposure, um, of course, to um, little aspects of um, uh, VR, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. I can see that. And then people are getting to have an, an idea of, of what the future is going to be. Uh, we cannot overemphasize uh, and um, I will still tie it down to, to interest. Okay, so um, of course, if the government is not taking into uh, cognizance the, uh, the advantages of uh, education, and changing the curriculum in such a way that we are now catching up with times. So, uh, we are now, uh, sorry, we are recent in terms of knowledge acquisition. Then we, 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 we and of course you, uh, Hebron Academy, you're going to have challenges. Okay, so right now, um, my impression is that um, it's only those that have, this, have picked up that interest that you definitely uh, have uh, going. And uh, of course, that interest keeps them 
uh, are going. So, of course, for the academy, they are doing quite well. Uh, there are other institutions around that are currently getting involved in um, education of, uh, of people around the world. Of course, uh, the internet has made the world a village. So, uh, my advice is that if you're not, if you're not partnering with Hebron Academy and you are online, there are a lot of um, um, sites where you can learn free courses on um, the blockchain. You can learn a little bit of awareness. You can even learn programming, uh, the Ross language and the other programming on how to write smart contracts. It's currently available right now. If you, you to, for those that want to that go out of their way uh, to get that done. Um, again, depending on the um, structure of the academy, there's always an, uh, be, there may be need to diversify um, the learning curriculum. Right, uh, so I know there will be some guys that will want to do programming, learn a lot in terms of programming on the various blockchains. Um, there will be those that want to have a little bit of lessons on smart contracts, especially with regards to law. Uh, so, it's, of course, um, the, the, the academic can expand this. Uh, so, people who have who have an idea that some that are not necessarily too um, interested in programming, but they just want to know more, just a little bit about. Trading. There yeah, are some that are not interested in trading. They want to know about smart contracts. Yeah, those that even want to know deep about the blockchain. And then, of course, we have NFTs and metaverse on the other side of this uh, uh, new technology. So, as we gradually, of course, as we gradually, uh, as we gradually expand the academy, and to all those that are listening out there, um, please go join uh, the content Hebron Academy. They have a lot of features, a lot of interactions. And um, hopefully, if we have the government support, of course, this is going to expand uh, um, our, our sphere of influence regarding letting people know about uh, um, the recent happenings. Wow. So thank you very much. Um, the Academy appreciates that. And just as you have said, we are also looking at adding more courses um, from um, how to create VR content. We're also looking at bringing other skills like graphic design, and other soft skills that more or less the entry skills yes. into the digital world because uh, most times we found out that um, people are scared of any any word has to do with programming, smart contract, or blockchain. <laughs> so you would say so we're just trying to look at how to bring out some of the easy skills for people to enter. Maybe when you start from graphics, you will be able to understand how to build a website, and from the website you probably want to go into how. To, uh, you can build a blockchain and possibly how to um, interact or build a smart contract. So we have been looking at how to bring in easy digital skills for people to be able to have access to them and not just that have experience to see how it works. So that's why we're looking at the VR headsets, uh, the metaverse, and the entire experience that has to do with um, uh, the entire augmented mixed reality and virtual reality. We feel when we give you the experience, and we tell you this is how you'll be able to learn how to do this content. It's easier to have more people going to it. Too. So hopefully very soon, uh, we'll be having a VR content uh, creation course um, released on the academy for people to follow. So thank you very much for your advice, sir. And for people please watching, kindly ask your question on the live comments so that uh, guest people are able to answer it as we proceed uh, with the event. Uh, we also want to still take one more time to appreciate our sponsors for this wonderful um, support you are giving the entire academy to uh, sponsor this particular uh, project for this year. So also again, sir, we are going to move on with the question before, if you are still watching, you can send your shout out to our guest speaker so that he can see. Um, a lot of people are watching, but they want to ask questions on the WhatsApp, which I'm not taking questions from WhatsApp. So please, if you are watching live, I can see more people watching from I can see people from his community watching. Um, a lot of people are watching from his community. Kindly ask him. I know you have um, you have learned one or two from personal meetings with him, but this is an opportunity to possibly ask him questions that he must have not even told us some of the answers. So maybe some secret questions that he has just given you all the secrets. There. So maybe you can ask questions here so that he can share with us on what's happening. So, sir, um, we know you have been in the space. Uh, what are some of the uh, projects you are looking at? And what are some of the projects you have laid your hand upon as an expert, possibly consulting for them to give advice? And what are the tips you think some of those projects are going to do in the nearest future? Okay, so um, basically, look at um, 
projects that are expanding, uh, solving real-time problems for uh, people. Of course, that's what technology is meant to do. And once you can start to solve that problem, there's an opportunity to make money. So I'm focused on two projects uh, currently right now. And of course, um, leadership is uh, what leadership of those projects are, are quite important. You want you don't want uh, uh, you don't want to um, venture into a project where there is either challenges legislatively. Mm -hmm or there are challenges with uh, whether the project can succeed, uh, succeed or does not have a backing of any sovereignty. Uh, so, okay, so um, on the other side of the blockchain, there are projects that are focused on uh, building of, uh, of course, uh, the government is changing. Uh, the government in Europe, a particular government in Europe is changing. I, I think I've put in the law by 2025, they will stop um, using fuel on their cars. So. Uh, they, they, are, they are converting to electric uh, electric uh, um, charging. And so there's a project centered on building electric chargers around. So, so of course, they have NFTs that give you an access to you to own those electric charging stations around the world. So that is one of the advantage. There are those that have to deal with car parking spaces. Um, so uh, parking space was a problem in some countries in Europe. So uh, there was a blockchain solution developed around that. Uh, took particular interest in that. Then uh, one major aspect is tokenization. So um, tokenization gives everyone an opportunity for you to own an asset uh, wherever you find, wherever it is in the world without you leaving the comfort of your home, all right? So and again, those assets are, are assets that are generating not only uh, um, value in the long run, but also increasing in terms of quantity. Uh, so. Uh, I'm focused on those particular two projects uh, right now. And again, NFTs that are really backed by assets, real life assets around the world. All right. So thank you very much for that. I believe um, some of us have been able to understand. So we are looking at projects that have to do with parking, which is important so people can go and uh, look for projects that are possibly building, that are trying to solve solutions as to parking space. Um, energy, I think, is one key industry that we're seeing a lot of um, revolution or turnaround. And it's important to actually look at um, projects that are looking into that aspect. Then I think there's one has to do also uh, with data and uh, how people's data are going to be secured. And then um, the one that you talked about, um, the carbon, is really important because of the carbon pollution is becoming too much. And I think it's one of the things that even the global is looking at how to be able to control climate change um, and a lot. So it's very important for us to look at um, some of the fields that uh, our guest speaker have spoken about and we'll be able to possibly make good decisions and we'll be able to see where the entire trend is going. So th thank you very much, sir. Um, our time is fast spent. Uh, we barely have two minutes or three minutes to go. Uh, okay, somebody is asking me, my, this is a question to me, okay? Uh, okay, he's asking if our company partners with any organization for students student with practical experience in form of internship um, after program. So yes, uh, what we do in Hebron, one of the things we're trying to do now is we're trying to see how we'll be able to visit schools and see how we'll give them the experience of what the metaverse, NFTs, and the entire blocking and people space um, what's happening in those spaces. Uh, some of the schools, we go and we do this event for free. Uh, so we, we have that. Uh, if you have any school, you probably, most probably want us to visit. You can just um, send me a message and we'll be able to have you guys on our schedule. Most probably visit your school and show. Then for internship, yes, uh, Big Contact is taking internship, but we have to stop because of the regulations. And so we'll not be able to work fiscal in the office, so we usually work remotely. And most times, uh, for people coming for interview from school, you have to be present for the supervisor. So that's why we have to stop. But hopefully when the regulation stops and everything, we might be able to take um, interns, and most probably uh, we're going to also enroll people for their NYC in the company. But uh, for the school partnerships, it's something we can do. We visit school and we will come with our gadgets um, to give the student experience of what the metaverse and uh, the VR headset are being used for. So that is for free. So thank you very much, sir, for this uh, wonderful time and session that you have taken to help us understand NFT, their future, 
um, how we'll be able to take a proper position for the NFT. I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time. It seems uh, a lot of your community members are joining in now. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, the video is recorded. You can watch it on his um, LinkedIn handle. You can watch it on his Facebook um, profile. You can watch on my YouTube channel, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. So um, whatever channel you want to watch, uh, we have the links on the banners. You can kindly follow the links and watch them. Uh, you can also follow the guest speaker. And if you are watching late, you can ask your question. And I'm very sure he will keep attending to questions on the comment section um, even after this live event. So um, thank you very much, um, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Ethan. Please, before you go, uh, you have um, three, four minutes. Hopefully, other questions will not drop in um, to give us your last word before we wrap up for today. Okay, so uh, thanks once again, um, um, Jeff. Um, usually, um, when a technology becomes disruptive, there's a certainty that that technology will take away jobs. Um, you want to ask me how? Um, uh, technology works around the clock, so it's not tired. Um, it is uh, cheaper to, to maintain. Uh, because, of course, it reduces the cost of doing business, increases profits. Um, technology is borderless, so it's not restricted by re uh, region. It's not subject to emotions, decisions, and cannot be bribed, all right? And it can sell billions of users simultaneously. So what has happened? Uh, the jobs you had 15 to 20 years ago are no longer existing today, or they have significantly re re reduced. So... You can ask uh, secretaries who were using typewriters or who knew how to write shorthand, or shorthand specialists, post office people, and you can go and ask them and they will tell you that they are practical experience. So what is happening? Technology is expanding at an exponential rate in such a way that the jobs you have today in the next five years may no longer be uh, available. And it is affecting a lot of people, banking sector, supply chain, voting, insurance, parking reservation, cloud storage services, government systems, healthcare, there's a lot. So I'm not here to scare anyone, but reality respects uh, a no one. So if you're not an expert in technology, uh, right, how can you make technology work for you? Because that's the most effective way you can bridge up that gap, right? And what are your options knowing fully well that whether you have a job or not, the government is always looking for a way to tax you, right? Or corporation or your business in order to meet up their, their financial obligations. So if I told you that there was an opportunity that is legal and credible where you can, one, become a co-owner of a blockchain. Um, of course, um, have a master node hub that makes you a validator on that blockchain, making you earn from all the transactions, NFT, metaverse, and staking, whatever it is, you can earn from those uh, um, transactions by becoming a co-owner of that blockchain. And of course, become a residual income earner in carbon mm -hmm. credits in the, the aviation industry, the movie industry, cargo delivery, and real estate. If I, if I told you that it was a legal and credible opportunity where you can become a co-owner of this of these um, various assets and names, would you take that opportunity? And do you know that you can actually do this without even disrupting your main hustle or your nine to five job or whatever it is you're doing? There is that opportunity. If you're interested in it, you can always drop me a message on DM on my Facebook uh, on my social media uh, handles on LinkedIn, and then we can show, I can show you a little bit more about this opportunity. You don't necessarily need to be a blockchain expert. All you need to do is have an understanding about what real life asset is and income that generates residual and passive uh, uh, income for you. Assets that generate passive income for you. So thank you very much, Jafet. Thanks to Big uh, Hunter. Uh, thanks to Hebron Academy and to everyone who joined this call. Uh, yes, and before you to go, answer all your questions. Before you go, that, there's, there's one question I've promised myself. I'll ask every speaker before they will leave. And this mm -hmm. one uh, question that's, in fact, if you can get a lot more scared, I think we will show up. It's good you ask you about, and which is all about AI. And so I promised myself okay. every day I will talk with any speaker I must ask him about AI from today henceforth. So I think I'll, I'll start with you because Elon Musk has said he's, he's already scared of what AI is doing. Well, I've seen, I think one the top director in Google also, I think he left Google recently that what the AI is, what they are building with the AI now, he had to just leave. So, so before you go today, please 
a lot of Nigerians, a lot of people that have not even um, moved from web web two. They have not even moved from web one to web two, not web three. <laughs> and now we are bringing AI that is already threatening even high end skills. Please, sir, in one word, are we going to survive AI or what is AI? So that we just wrap up today. Thank you. Uh... AI runs on a technology that was developed by human beings. So the question is that will it, will it uh, replace a lot of things? Yes. Will it affect a lot of people? Yes. How do you become ahead of it? By owning the technology that builds that AI. So if you found a way to own that technology, congratulations, you are way ahead of the AI. But if you have not found that, well, um, technology must work and it's not emotional. So um, <laughs> find an opportunity where you can be the owner of that AI, co-owner in this particular case, and then you have all your problems solved. Wow, thank you thank very you. much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that answer. I really appreciate it, sir. Uh, we really appreciate all your efforts, all your commitment to uh, Blockchain for All since our inception. This is the third year. Um, thank you very much for always taking our call. You know how busy you can be, um, but to be able to always be here with us, it means a lot to me and the entire academy and be found as a pool. Thank you very much. We can't give you anything uh, unless if we have our NFT, maybe to send you free NFT. But thank you very much. We are very sure we'll get to a day where we'll be able to send out gifts, uh, big gifts to all our speakers. Uh, you are one that has inspired us to remain consistent in this. Um, I, as a person, have been following you up and it has helped me become more consistent even on the blockchain. So thank you very much. And the entire academy, the entire student are sending their regards. Thank you for all you have done. Um, thank you. I will pray that uh, God will continue to increase. So, um, as we wrap up for today, um, kindly share this video to your friends, for everyone that has a community out there. Um, it's free. At the end of the entire program for this year, we are going to still bundle um, the entire course. Put it out for everyone. For three, really, uh, you can check it at hebron.seller.co. And you see the blockchain for all 2023 edition, which is free for everyone to watch. And same also when we are rounding up for this year, we're going to make the entire videos available. And we hope that we continue to go out to teach people more and more people continue to hear your voice, Mr. Adrian. More and more people continue to hear your yeah. advice. And um, this video will serve a reference point for us in the next 10 years to say that if an expert has told us something like this, so it's not as if we did not say it, we said it. And people that have used it are actually here. Yeah, 10 years will come and go, just like you always say. It's a 10 years will come and go whether we like it or not. So, but this video will be a reference, and the next 10 years uh, will be joyful to say that an expert was invited and said this and these are the opportunities, and today we are living in it. So, thank you very much, um, sir, and to have a wonderful night. Rest. Um, for Please don't viewers. forget where, where you where you where you pack all those videos. Don't forget to tokenize it. I'll be interested. No, no, no. <laughs> exactly, sir. Exactly, we will do it. We will do so. Thank interested. you very much. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, do have a wonderful night. Rest. Tomorrow we'll be back by seven p.m. with another speaker to be talking about another wonderful topic. So I can't wait to see you all. Thank you and good night. Mm -hmm.